again, no one has accused Mr. Kelly of anything. No doctor signed under oath, no individual whatsoever, even this no state. So at this point, as I told Mr. Kelly, it's hard to prepare for a hearing when you do not know your accuser and what you're accused of. Now we'll start today, if I may approach the members. I have an agreed order of the Southeast Fire and Rescue Department Inc. with the Southeast Fire and Water Protection District. This document, signed by Judge Burr, states that any claims between the department and the district are held in hand. The date of this order is August 24, 2016. What has happened in this matter is that the district, Fire Protection District, has fully funded the fire department through June 30, 2018, which is the primary function of the district. A budget was presented by the department, and the district, through the leadership of Mr. Kelly, met the budget fully funded through 2018, June 30, 2018. I would like this board to look at that order and review it because it is an agreement to obey pursuit of current or future claims until resolution of the appeal of June 30, 2018. We collectively as a community know that there is a legal issue between the department and the district in its formation and its processes. Some of those have been addressed to the Attorney General's office. We'll talk about that. But we're trying, as a district, to avoid further litigation. We want the litigation to end. There is an agreement which is being operated by the district and the department that provides for the funding. But in paragraph number four, you will see that the department has responsibilities to the district. And that requirement from the district has been a source of contention for some time. Even at this late date, even though the contract between the district and the department requires the department to furnish an audit beginning in 2013 to the district, no audit has been forthcoming. None. And we admit, as part of the district, that it is a source of contention and the district has demanded a full and complete transparency and accounting of the department and how it funds its operations. We are aware, as a community, a public report by the state auditor in 2015, which is consistent with findings made in 1995 by the Attorney General's office, is that there are substantial deficiencies in the operation of the department. They need to be addressed. We need to protect the firemen, but we need to protect the taxpayers. The district is trying to protect both. We start out that the auditors found that the district has levied taxes at the maximum allowed by law since 2008 without conducting any analysis. Again, an audit. Excuse me, Your Honor. I apologize. Can we get a copy of that? Yes. I appreciate what you're talking about, but that really has nothing to do with the reasons that we're having to do that. We're not in a court of law, and the reasons that this report deemed it advisable that you're doing, Mr. Kelly, are limited to these issues here. And that's what we would expect. Mr. Woodley, I would expect that, except the fact that the fire department had representatives before this fiscal court 
anticipate out of the presence of the public and matters were discussed. Now, to say that you're going to limit this when in fact the limit is not about the meetings, but more importantly about money, what we've been fighting about for a number of years now. This is the second time in 2015 and 2016 the department has filed suit against the district, not the other way around. And it's concerning the idea of money and how the department is funded. There's questions about the funding. There's questions about firemen receiving bonuses, which is clearly in violation of the law. The allegations that we present is any, any kind of monetary, uh, any kind of money involved in that, any kind of. Yeah. I don't think we're fighting about money. We're, we're not, it's not about money. This is not about money. The state auditor and the attorney general also made reports that there was a conflict of interest for having people on the department on the district board. Again, that has been demonstrated now on two separate occasions. Now, we get to the point of the, again, not anything stated as far as a person, but the district has had continuously regular meetings, has raised monies, has fully funded the department. Fully funded no. the department. Not through fiscal 217, through fiscal 1718, which is his job to do. Now, I don't know anyone, being president of the meeting without attending, that anyone was cut off. There were loud meetings, there were arguments, and it was about money. This is not about money. money. This is about individuals. There's no money. We're not accusing money. We're not accusing anything. There's no accusing of money here. There's no. There's nobody accusing Mr. Kelly of anything. There's nothing signed by any one person that says something happened. None. And I looked at the documents. A request was made to the county attorney's office. The county attorney's office responded. So we don't have anything signed by anything that Mr. Kelly did anything. Well, that came from the county attorney's office. Now, when we talk about Mr. Kelly and what he has done, I am aware that Mr. Freeman, on behalf of the district, the department, has requested intervention from various <coughs> agencies to look at the issue about who may be on a fire department, who may be on a fire district, who may be a member of the department sitting on the district, that's the department's law. He had questions about it. And I will tell you, in fairness to Mr. Freeman, he has not received a response. There are questions about who can and who cannot sit and how we elect people in a district like department situation when you have a department which is a firefighter and a district that's doing taxpayers. We've got a state of general, state attorney of opinion that says <coughs> firemen of the department have a conflict of interest <coughs> being on the district board. Just checks and balances. No, no. Now, we did miss one meeting that I'm aware of, and Mr. Kelly can address that. And it just so happened, Mr. Kelly has been a longtime member of this community as an employee of Publishers Press. There was a meeting scheduled that just happened to coincide with the next time he said. That meeting was canceled so that people could attend funeral services, make arrangements to go to the funeral home, do the things that you would expect someone to do that had a close relationship with a man for 30 or 40 years. That's the only meeting that has been missed. But if anybody saying you missed meetings and suddenly we failed to do something, there's your proof that no, we didn't fail. 
the department has been funded, which we are required to do. We have done it. We have met each and every. If you look at that document, the department will not ask for further funding. We have said that that district has satisfied that department in full. Again, sir, I don't think any allegations on that paper was anything about money. Well, this was what record, what do you want to do? Not having any doing something you weren't supposed to do? I'm not accusing you of nothing. Well, then we don't need to be here. We're just removing a person from a board for not doing what he's supposed to do. It sounds like we did exactly what we're supposed to do. The district has fully funded the department. Fully funded. 100%, not only for this year, but for next year. And it's signed, sealed, and delivered by a circuit court judge. That's doing the district's job. That is exactly what this district is supposed to be doing, is funding the fire department. What we did, that's what the district has done. Who is saying we haven't done that? It's not the district's job at this point. They have contracted out the fire protection. And now they're paid for it. <coughs> fully funded. We still have abuses we need to address, and that's where the friction is coming from. If anyone's not aware of the friction, the difficulty that this community has faced with a department that is not answerable to the fiscal court, hasn't been answerable to anyone as far as how monies are paid out and who is supervising, that's where the issue is coming from. And that's where Mr. Kelly is here today. He is trying to have financial accountability and transparency in the district and the department. Now, if anybody wants to say Mr. Kelly shouldn't have went to Nick Simon's funeral, I, I, I think that's, that's a little rough. That's a little rough. But the department has been fully funded. The job is to comply with that 100%. As far as the firefighters and the way the elections took place, we're trying to avoid that lawsuit. The district does not want that lawsuit. The firemen have been participating in the meetings, whether they have been appointed legally or not appointed legally, whether Mr. Moulton was appointed legally, whatever. We don't need to go forward on that. That's what we decided in this case is now pending the Court of Appeals. We don't need to expend any more money on lawyers. Period. You know, I brought with me today, you keep saying about money, but there's three checks the department has written for $175,000 for lawyers and private investigators. Not the district, the department. The district is paying for it. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make $10,000. Thank you. Thank you. We want it to end. We want the lawsuits to end. We've got an appeal. Judge Burr is sustained. We live with it. If he's not, then we do something else. The meeting that people are complaining about, I have to say, my client used some judgment, I think correctly, and attended funeral services for his long friend, Nick Simon, who has been an unbelievable supporter of this community. I don't think that's even in question. I understand. Over here. Are we done? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of Mr. Tom Kelly? Good afternoon, Mr. Kelly. Good afternoon. We will limit this time to the board. Is that legal? Mr. Kelly. I'm asking you to do it. Thank you. You won't be limited. You can put a square in there, though. So, no, there will be no time. You can promise to tell the truth, no truth, nothing but the truth. I'm Bruce. First question to ask is how is one to get fair hearing when the proceedings are conducted by his accusers, especially after it was done illegally, in closed executive session, 
where a person not on fiscal court was brought into supposedly confidential meeting to testify against me and bring up these conduct our charges. Minimally, I should have been brought into the executive session as well to refuse to defend the charges. This type proceeding where fiscal court acts as prosecutor, judge, and jury can in no way offer one a fair and impartial hearing. His attempted character assassination is merely an attempt to kill and destroy a person's reputation. I will not sit here and have my character, my credibility, my integrity, or my reputation for the first time in 76 years called into question. Since 1958, a week out of high school, I have enjoyed a very successful 58-year career in training, the last 34 years in publishing, here in Bullock County, with an impeccable reputation in community and public service. For 58 years, over 3,000 consecutive weeks, I have never missed a paycheck. I have never been laid off, and I have never been fired from a job. And now, charges were being made to remove me from an unpaid volunteer position, again, in public and community service. I will now face my accusers <clears throat> with questions of my own and let my reputation, my character, and my honesty be put the test against yours. Fourteen years ago, in 2002, County Judge Executive Nellie Roberts appointed me for the first of four consecutive three-year terms on the Shepherdsville Bullock County Tourism Convention Commission. During 10 of the 12 years, I served as either chair or treasurer. <coughs> While financial oversight questions were not nearly as severe as those experienced here, irregularities in financial oversight concerning it and its proceedings were brought into question. Sometimes cash from the uh, possession stand wasn't deposited for six weeks. There was not a chain of custody for cash receipts and deposits. The conference center servers were being paid in cash by a third-party caterer out of Portland. These types of irregularities were found and quickly brought under control with board oversight. During this time, this time, Jack Roberts routinely thanked me and praised me profusely for my dedication and community and public service. Again, the point of appointing me to four consecutive three-year terms says just that. When I decided to retire from the Tourism Commission at the end of 2014, Judge Roberts contacted me, assured me she wanted me to continue, she wanted to continue to use my experience on board of commissions to assist first discussing a possible appointment to the Economic Development Board. <coughs> then later calling me in her office to describe how I could help resolve some issues surrounding the Southeast Boulevard Protection <coughs> I was appointed with fiscal court approval and later voted chair by the newly appointed district board of trustees in July 2015. Two months later, in early May of this year, I contacted, or two months, excuse me, two months later in 2015, Judge, Judge Roberts contacted me and asked me, following general discussions, to support her candidacy for state representative with a donation to her campaign. After some discussion, it was agreed that a $250 check <coughs> would be made, would be the appropriate donation. This check has been returned, no question. When the judge resigned or 
decided not to run. This check for $250 was made out to Judge Roberts when I was still in favor with her to help her campaign. Two months later, in early May, or in early May of this year, I contacted Judge Roberts to ask her advice on nominating process for a trust reappointment to the Southeast Bullet Park Picture Board. And this is a statement that I had, that I made at the time and had typed up. When I called Judge Mellon Roberts to discuss the possible appointment, reappointment, or new appointment for a trustee position on the board, set to expire in June 2016, at district's care, I would expect the courtesy and we had some discussion and input in the ability to submit names for consideration by members of this report. Who would make this appointment? Judge Roberts asked me, or advised me that I could send her a list of potential candidates, or better still, I should talk directly with my magistrate, Joe Rado, as his recommendation to the position would likely be approved by other members of this report. As Judge Roberts stated, it was normal and customary procedure for fellow magistrates on this report to approve an honor to request recommendation to each other concerning appointment or any other business in their respective districts. On Tuesday, May 30th, I contacted Magistrate Rado, requested a lunch appointment with him to discuss several items in the district, including the appointment for the term of the Southeast Bowl of Fire Protection Board of Trustees, set to expire in June 2016. Magistrate Rado indicated he was very busy and didn't know how he could work me in, but finally agreed to meet for lunch at Calvin's at 11.30 on Friday, June 3rd, 2016. Shortly after arriving for lunch on Friday, June 3rd, at approximately 11.20, Magistrate Joe Laswell arrived, sat down next to me in the waiting area and indicated he was there to meet and have lunch with me. I thought at the time Magistrate Rayhill had invited Magistrate Laswell to join us, which I had a problem with. We eventually sat down at a table, I thought, still waiting for Magistrate Rayhill. After about two and a half, or after about a half hour wait, Magistrate Laswell said, we might as well order, since it was not uncommon for Magistrate Rayhill to miss a scheduled appointment. And to my surprise, it was only then that I realized Magistrate Rayhill had no intention of meeting with me, but instead sent Magistrate Laswell as his last minute replacement. Or was it not last minute, had he planned it all along? Magistrate Laswell and I had a very detailed, frank, and lengthy open discussion of, on, the, on the upcoming appointment to the district board. Concerning the appointment, the trustee Dan Timido to the position. His name was the only name discussed at the entire meeting, although I had a list of eight other potential candidates, which I have right here. None of which I had yet to contact. Should Timido reappoint or not even be considered? At this point, I was asked to keep this under your hat. And then was told the scenario would be, what the scenario would be concerning the appointment of this position. I left the meeting with a very detailed explanation of how the appointment would be handled and what the expected and desired outcome would be. All of this stated and described by me, to me, by Magistrate Joe Edwell. The following Tuesday, after hearing the appointment of Dave Jurgens to the position by a five to nothing vote, I immediately composed an email to Magistrate Grayhill and a separate email to Magistrate Laswell. Both emails later forwarded to Judge Roberts. Attached a copy to both emails for the record. I've yet to hear from either of us, any of the three, commenting or refuting the claims and references described in this letter. The comments made to them in the emails. It was like none of these events described even took place. It was further noted to me that should a replacement for Thibodeau not be found in the next 60 days, acceptable to this report, 
Thibodeau would automatically be reappointed by law <coughs> to another term. And here's the email to Joe Rayo. <coughs> Joe, I want to let you know how disappointed I was for your no-show for our election appointment at Cattlemen's as best ready. While I had a nice lunch with Joe Laswell, I specifically wanted to meet with you as my district manager on a couple of items. Can I understand why someone else would sit in and represent you instead? Had something come up and you could not keep your appointment, a simple phone call or email would have been sufficient and appropriate. To simply stand someone up without notice is so unprofessional and unacceptable for someone in your position. Can I refer to that? Joe, who called you for lunch? You called the wrong Joe, brother. You never called me. I never talked to that you. That is an absolute lie. How did he get a call? Did let you call finish. him? Let me finish. Did you call him? No, I didn't. He said he did. You I called didn't. the wrong Joe, because I would have been there. I've never missed the meeting. You know, Tom? No, no. I promise you, I've never lied to you, and I've never lied I'm to you. you I have You've never lied. called me. You called the wrong Joe. You also called That was Joe there at the same time you were supposed no, to be. No, absolutely not. Bull. Absolutely I not. I think you're confused, Tom. No, I'm not confused. No, Joe just said not. you called me up no, the same time. Not. I did not. You called the wrong Joe, Tom. I did not. not. You called the wrong Joe, Tom. Well, that's an easy way out. We don't need to argue. You called the wrong Joe, Tom. No, I didn't. No, absolutely. You're my manager. Why would I call Bill Ashley? He said, I was here there at the exact same time. I told you, I out. I did out. Now, I have a scenario was. You called the wrong Joe. I promise you that. Joe, I would have expected more out of you than a lot of you. But more of you had to handle this in a more professional manner. I expect to hear from you on this matter. I haven't heard the word yet. Joe Lankwell. Joe, I'm shocked and disappointed to hear of last night's fiscal court decision to appoint Dave Gerber to fill the position due to expire on the South East Coast Architecture Board. After last Friday's lunch meeting, where you filled in for the no-show Joe, Ray, um, Joe Rayhill, you told me to keep this under your hat, but that no one would be appointed to the position currently held by Dan Tibbetow. Since three of the magistrates would not go along with whosoever name was recommended. I must ask, what happened between Friday afternoon and Tuesday night's fiscal court meeting? <coughs> Who got to you, Joe, and the other two magistrates over the weekend to change their mind when you told me face to face over lunch Friday? <coughs> I would like to reply by email and get phone number. Joe, I believe you. I had no reason not to. I respected you and trusted you, but why? I would appreciate a reply at your earliest convenience. I had up until today on your request to keep this under my hat. But now I don't know what to think or who to believe. Joe, please help me understand all this. Or as someone once said, it's not about politics, it's about people. Or is it, it's not about people, it's about politics. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that wants to speak on Mr. Tom Kelly's behalf?
uh, you know, he's represented by counsel and myself, but you have the request for a document so that your record will show because this is being recorded as required by law. Uh, that you, you, you have not produced one witness or one bit of evidence for Mr. Blunt, excuse me, uh, Mr. Kelly or Mr. Milton. Also, we have filed a legal memorandum. Now, anyone that knows anything about Kentucky law, a disciplinary proceeding, there are basic rights. Thank God for our military and our flag, because we do have rights. If you accuse someone, you make some serious accusations, but we still have not produced one iota of evidence, one individual, and uh, you know that's why I'd like to file permanent record with these are our originals uh, that I've mailed each member of, of this report has been served with these, Mr. Clarity, uh, so that on the record, uh, uh, we, we, wait, well, uh, yeah. Parker, please. What are you trying to do? Well, I, I'm, I thought you represented the county attorney that sent the notice. Yeah, you don't represent okay. the fiscal okay. 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 Uh, and, and Mr. Moulton would at least ask for additional time if, if, you're, if you're not welcome. Um, but he's represented by legal counsel. And as I said, his motion to dismiss is there's no witnesses and no evidence. And under the Constitution, state law, he has the right to hear. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of Mr. Kevin Moulton?
However, this district board has refused to transfer the tax funds. Uh, they haven't been paid money from the county since 2014. Okay? And um, the board has manipulated everything to force them to go into those reserves that had set aside to build two new firehouses, okay? They just recently, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Uh, Burns, showed up at the county clerk's office, and I got a copy of the document where they lowered our tax rate to two cents on the which is so far below. And it looks like to me that this is what generates the problem that the old kid couldn't put a handle on. These firemen don't know what their future is. When you've got a board over there that's supposed to be looking out to them, looking out for the citizens, too. Mismanaging and planning. There's an agenda that I assure you will be revealed in days to come. But the point being is they have strapped them by refusing to give them the tax dollars that we paid in. And there's other things that will come to light in the future. I don't know how to speak this time. I just thank y'all very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Robert. And it doesn't go away. 
This letter is October of 2015. Now, I know we don't want to talk about finances, but one of the things that's required if you are a special purpose government entity is that you must complete on an annual, fiscal annual basis, a audit. Now, I am going to show you correspondence addressed to me by the now attorney for the department, and it says, one month after the department's request to be declassified and not produce an audit, here is from the attorney for the department saying again, if you want an audit, you can pay for it. That's not what's required by the law. This fiscal court has an audit every year. Every fiscal year, by the Department of Local Government. So does every city, and so does every other fire department existing in Boulder County, Kentucky. Now that's where the gravity keeps coming in and coming in, and I know people have hard feelings. Uh, I would tell this board, this court, that the credit fire department board is acting to correct some of the grievances that took place in the past, and they've done a good job of that. Uh, Chairman Lee, Chief Butler have done a good job moving the fire department forward. But when you talk about transparency, when you talk about taxpayers' money, when you talk about this fire department, this fiscal court has no control whatsoever. Once that money leaves the district's hand and goes to the department, it becomes, the, and they, the department's very clear about this, it's the department's money and it's the department's problem. How much trouble we have, council, is appointing people to that board that they take care of. That's the control that we have. Magistrate Bayhill, you don't have any ability to appoint someone. I'm talking about the district board. So. I understand that. But their job, their sole function under this contract is to raise money. And to raise money, the district is trying to find the right amount of money to fund the department. And without good financial data of what is being spent and what needs to be spent, it's hard to come up with that number. I agree. Again, we're not talking about money. Well, some people are talking about money. But I would tell this court that the one meeting that Mr. Kelly failed to have a meeting for one time, was next time it's funeral. Now, I do, I do recall that. Now, outside of that, the meetings have been going on, they've been taking place, people are allowed to speak, sometimes they're quite loud, but they get to speak. Mr. Phelps got to speak pretty good the other night, did a good job. A long time. A long time, got to speak for a long time. I mean, meetings were open. Uh, uh, the target was simply not found there, so Mr. Kelvin issued a drop of the meeting. Thank you. Frank, all right, if you had to sign up to speak, okay? You had to? Yeah. I just want to make a statement. You know, I, I know emotions are right, and I understand it. I call them you're emotional. I understand everybody's emotional. They're talking about a fire district. They're talking about money. They're talking about, you know, everything's going on today. It's not about money. Today, it's not about money. Everybody, I know everything boils down to money. But today, it's talking about two gentlemen that we believe, or I believe, that hasn't done their job. We, I've been a magistrate for two years. If we've had two boards out there, I don't know, 16 men, grown men that cannot get along. We have four lawyers fighting this. Back and forth, back and forth. Who's winning? Nothing against it's your profession. The, the lawyers are the only people winning this game. The only people. And I understand you're, we need lawyers. But in this situation, we've got a chair man. It ain't about Tom Kelly. It's about a chair that can't get this done. Two years we've been fighting this. Fighting, fighting, arguing it's about how can we get this done? How can we change this board to get someone on there that can get it done? Mediation didn't go very well. 
So you tell me, how do we do it? We keep going the same way we're doing for the next two years? Or does the only point of control that the physical court has is to appoint and take people off boards that's not doing their job? We have to account to our taxpayers what we do and what we don't do. And I understand the taxpayer's money gets moved around a lot. But to pay for lawyer fees instead of tax protection is unbelievable. And I understand that they're fully funded. But this board hasn't given that fire department any money for two years. They said that they've been funded. The two point whatever million dollars they had in reserve is saying that they will control a fire department on that. And then drop the tax rate to 2%. 2.9 or Two cents for hundred dollars. Two percent. Two cents. Point two. Two cents. Two cents. Will not sustain a fire department. Don't be any fire department in Bullet County. You can go outside Bullet County if you would like, but they're all at ten cents. I don't care. If you want to fight? You dislike me? My job is these taxpayers. My job is to my babies. If you want to go off emotions, my job is to my babies. When I pick up that phone, that fire department's got the best equipment, the best trucks, the best people, the best training to come in my house and save my babies' lives. And that takes money. But today is not about Tom Kelly. It's about a chair on a board that's not doing his job the way we see it. And I understand we can stand here and argue all day long about that. But today, it's about making this better. And all we're doing is fighting, arguing, and spending money. This is not a judicial purpose. We're not charging him with nothing. We're saying that Tom Kelly, as a chairman of the board, is not getting the job done. And this is Joe Brayhill talking. This is not talking for this physical court. So today I make a motion to remove Tom Kelly as chairman and to remove Kevin Motes as a fire department. Effective the meeting. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second to that motion?